everyone, so I recently took a trip to visit Three Fields Entertainment to get a look at Final Code for Danger Zone 2, and as you can see from the footage, it's a modern day revamp of Burnout's Crash Mode, built using Unreal Engine 4. It's an evolution of the firm's work on Dangerous Golf, and of course the original Danger Zone. Now there's actually a fascinating development story here, and a focus on a different kind of agile, smaller scale indie development from a studio quickly evolving from one title to the next. Danger Zone 2 was put together by a team of just seven people. And when you look at it like that, it's a really cool achievement. But in the here and now, this release is one phase in the journey towards an eventual game we've all been wanting to play for years. A sequel to Burnout, or a spiritual sequel at least. So yeah, Burnout is a game series I've been following from its earliest beginnings when I first sat down with the Criterion team to see the first SRC demo, SRC standing for shiny red car, and that was built on the Renderware engine in common with all of the Burnout games. That engine evolved into what you're seeing now, OG Burnout for PlayStation 2, a brutally hard racing game that I still have very fond memories of. There was nothing like it. Burnout 2 Point of Impact refined the formula, and many still consider it one of the finest point-to-point -point racers ever made. But Burnout 3, with the introduction of takedowns, was the biggest selling series entry, and another massive technological leap for Criterion. But everyone has their favourite Burnout, and perhaps against the grain, the Xbox 360 version of Burnout Revenge is mine. Criterion upped the ante with their physics tech, introducing traffic checking, a divisive mechanism but one that I love. And that's kind of the thing about Burnout, those gameplay moments burned into your memories, and it's something that resonated for me with Danger Zone 2. Traffic checking, along with a bunch of Burnout mainstays, is added to the mix. So yes, you get the manic vehicular destruction, but there are some nice spins on the concepts, like getting behind the wheel of a massive truck and ploughing through with sheer momentum. The camera shifted back and up to give you a better view of the mayhem. And then there's this. Danger Zone 2 isn't a racing game as such, but three fields are building in the foundations for the more overt burnout style game to come. So in addition to your standard crash junctions, many of the tracks have a run up, and yes, that'll be boost chaining you're seeing there. Another key part of the burnout formula. It's all part of Three Fields' strategy here to build a game for today that maximizes output from limited resources while at the same time having one eye on the future and the game to come. And we can expect that more traditional burnout style racing game in the winter. In fact, Three Fields has already announced it and it's called Dangerous Driving. And it's not just the inclusion of gameplay elements that gives us some idea of this game-to-game -game evolution. It's in the technology as well. So, Danger Zone 1 looked like this, entirely indoors essentially. Moving the action back into the outdoors was the key for the sequel then, and to do this the developer built a new spline-based circuit editor which allows for fast track creation and iteration. It also opens the door to larger levels. They're all based on real-life locations in Danger Zone 2, from Kentucky and Chicago in the USA to Leeds and Birmingham in the UK. The aesthetic in Danger Zone 2 is kind of curious then. So, again, let's remember that Three Fields is a team of seven developers, so they rely upon Unreal Engine 4 to effectively give them access to a state-of-the-art renderer. So, if you look at the game, there is a kind of UE4 look to it, specifically in how materials are handled. Unreal Engine 4 has evolved significantly since Epic's success with Fortnite, but the point is that you get this recognisable look paired with a bright arcade Sega-style blue skies aesthetic. But everything here is fully dynamic. Lighting, shadows, everything. And in theory, a full time of day cycle could be implemented. Again, this is not something likely to happen for Danger Zone 2, but it's definitely in consideration for the upcoming Dangerous Driving. You do get a hint of what it's capable of here though, where the setting changes to another arcade classic scenario, Dusk. There are a few things I want to discuss about the look of Danger Zone 2 here. First of all, you're going to struggle to see much in the way of hard geometric edges because Unreal Engine 4's temporal anti-aliasing is in effect here. Secondly, for most users, this is going to be a 30 hertz experience, so to smooth off the look, there's a heavy use of motion blur. 
Now this is rather well done in that when you're traveling at full pelt going forwards, the edges of the screen have the motion blur effect, but the center of the viewport remains unblurred. Looks pretty good. So yeah, not bad at all, but it's not a match for the full unbridled 60 hertz of the original Burnout games. Truth is that the physics model here is processed entirely on CPU, and then there's the draw call overhead too. Instructions sent from the CPU telling the GPU what to draw. But obviously you can power past this limitation on the PC version. But still, Xbox One X here does have two modes, an exclusive feature also seen in the first Danger Zone. So the default is 30Hz, in common with all the other console versions, where native 4K is rendered with dynamic resolution scaling as a fallback. So Three Field's strategy here was to optimize the game with DRS disabled and running at 4K, then to engage it as a system of last resort at the end of development to maintain performance. So let's see how 30 Hertz looks first of all via frame rate analysis. This shot is pretty representative actually, and by and large, you are indeed getting 30. But there are pockets of incorrect frame pacing, not really noticeable during crash sections, but it does manifest as a slight stutter during racing areas. Now, funnily enough, Three Fields took me to task about this as part of our dangerous golf critique. But you know, there's a reason why 30 Hertz is handled like this and why I and the DF team think this works. In a racing game, this technique goes all the way back to Ridge Racer on PS1 and consistency in the refresh often fools some people into thinking 30 FPS is actually 60. Now during Dangerous Golf development, it wasn't really something they could address directly as this was an Unreal Engine artifact that we noted on several titles. But as evidenced by Fortnite and other games, UE4 can actually fix that now. Now, the motion blur hides the artifact to a large degree, but whether it's streaming or some other factor, there can be some occasional hitching too in the build that I saw, and I'll be interested to see if that persists into actual release code on a retail console. Now, of course, moving to 60 Hertz on PC fixes this completely. You get a new frame every display refresh, but Xbox One X does indeed have that performance mode. Here, the resolution drops significantly and the overall benefit is obvious. I mean, there's a reason why the original Burnout games ran at 60. After all, it's just kind of optimal for a driving game. But it's not a complete lock and our tools do detect some drop frames. Motion blur is still retained, however, in 60 Hertz mode. So actually seeing it, quite difficult in most scenarios. That said, the hitching that you see in 30 Hertz mode is actually more noticeable now. Overall though, given a choice between the two modes, this is the one I'd go for and it's exclusive to Xbox One X. But looking beyond performance and at what the game is actually delivering, there are some points I'd like to bring up. First of all, this is an indie game put together fairly quickly by a small team. So there's a curious mixture between those state-of-the-art Unreal Engine visuals and some fairly basic design in, say, the UI, which looks functional and to the point. And it kind of reminds me more of the Burnout 1 UI style rather than the more stylized later entries. But Danger Zone 2 does have it where it matters in that you really want those crashes to count to look spectacular visually. Friction is beautifully rendered with those insane GPU particles and impacts are heavily emphasized with camera shake and appropriate motion blur. Now I'm not sure we're looking at real-time geometry deformation on the vehicles but if it's more basic model swapping, the transition occurs in the midst of the pyrotechnics, so it doesn't really stand out. As usual for crash mode, once the carnage kicks off, the player remains in control of the camera, so it's nice to pan about and see what's going on across the playfield. That's usually quite a lot, as a Danger Zone 2 stage in its entirety processes up to 800 vehicles. And yeah, whether it's speedboats or construction materials, there's a bunch of payloads to, to knock off those larger lorries and whatnot. And yeah, about that traffic checking. You know, as I said earlier, everyone who's played Burnout has their own Burnout moments etched into their memory. The nostalgia that ensured that Burnout Paradise Remastered got a warm welcome. And the same nostalgia that has left us wanting for more Burnout for years now. Now, as I said, for me, Burnout Revenge on 360 was my game, the one I played to death and where traffic checking looks so cool. In Danger Zone 2, this mechanism mixes up the style of the destruction somewhat. Plowing through in a truck is fun, of course, but using checking to punt vehicles about into areas you can't reach adds to the strategy too. 
But more than that, in combination with the racing elements, we are getting that sense of being one step closer to more burnout. It's just a case of supporting Danger Zone 2 if you like what you see and giving the time and resources to three fields as they move from one title to the next. And yeah, maybe a while down the road, the tech would have advanced to move from circuit racing to a paradise style open world. But yeah, that's another burnout based controversy. I'm not going to go anywhere near in the here and now. But I'd just like to thank you for checking this video out. As always, do like and subscribe to support the work we do here at Digital Foundry and ring the bell if subbed to ensure you're notified of all new videos. And yes, in common with all of our stuff, Patreon supporters can grab a pristine download of this video at digitalfoundry.net presented in full 4K. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.